Hey guys, how's it going? I'm back here with another video and today I decided to bring this video where I'm going to be explaining to you guys a very important concept in React, which is the concept of splitting your code um, in order to improve performance, which is something a lot of React developers use in order to increase performance in projects that are big enough to require such thing. So before we get into the video, if you guys can leave a like and subscribe, I would massively appreciate it. It will help push my videos to more people and I'll be really grateful if you guys could do so. So with that in mind, let's get into the video. Okay, everyone. So in order to explain to you guys what code splitting is and when you should use it, I decided to utilize a project that I've already built. It's a pretty big project, as you can see. Um, it's also kind of beginner to intermediate, like a, that kind of project. It's not too big um, in, a, in a sense that I don't think I would need to implement code splitting in this case. However, I feel like using a small project is also really good to explain it to you guys. So the idea of code splitting is basically um, getting a large file, uh, which has a bunch of code and splitting the code into different bundles so that you don't have to load everything at once. So if you have a big React project um, that has, I don't know, a lot of different components, a lot of different pages, a lot of different routes, um, it might be advisable to do so because you really don't want a user who is just loading the website to have to wait for um, the whole project to load in order to start using it. So an example would be something like this. In this project right here, we have three routes. So it isn't a lot of routes um, to not overcomplicate stuff. But um, when you go into the website, you can see uh, you can log in, log out. There's like a lot of different routes over here that you can use. Um, I'm gonna log in again just so you guys can see. Um, but basically, uh, we have three routes in total, right? That you can navigate. However, if you are if you just got into this website and you are in the home page, there's no reason for um, the other like the create post. Uh, component over here or this route to load or even the login route to load as well because you're not using it. Um, obviously, uh, there are some use cases in which just uh, leaving it the way it is is good. However, um, if you have a lot of components and you know that users might not use all of the, those components, you can actually specify which components you want to load initially or which ones you want to wait for it to be active in order to start loading. So the example is as follows. Uh, we have these three routes, right? And imagine I want to basically um, load the components that exist inside of these routes, depending on if we need it or not. By default, what React does is it basically looks at all of this code over here. It sees that you're importing all of these routes, all of these files over here, and it will load all of that at once. It will bundle all of the imports and just load them at once which is not what we want because uh, we want to lazily load them depending on if we're going to use them or not. And obviously, I need to reiterate that this isn't the, what you want to do at every single time. And what you want is to lazily load the components you want to use depending on if the user is actively using them or not. So the way you do that is, first of all, um, you grab a component like this one. This is the main component, which represents the main page over here, the home page and we import it just like this, right? But we're actually going to import it a little bit different. Now, we're going to say const, then we're going to give a name to the component, we're just going to call it main, just as it was before, then we want to set it equal to um, something that we can import from uh, react, actually, so I'm going to come over here at the top, you see we have import react, and I want to import something called lazy. And this is a function that can be used to lazily load the components you want to use. So I'll come over here. Um, and I'll just separate this and say const main is equal to lazy. And inside of here, we can actually put a callback function that will specify which component we want to import. So we'll just grab this whole thing over here, um, import from main uh, slash main, something like this, uh, remove this, and just put a parentheses around this. So the import is actually a function as well that you can specify what you want to import. And now we can delete this, the other, the older import, and we have our component being lazily loaded. So we can do the same thing for the login, I'll just copy this. And I'll come over here, and just say login, and um, copy this route, and put it over here. 
and now our login is being lazily loaded as well. Now there is a thing we have our third one over here, the create post route. Um, in this case, there's a difference because in the other two uh, components, we are exporting default, as you can see, this is how we are exporting the component from this file. But the difference is that with uh, the create post, we're not doing that, we're just exporting and using the arrow notation, um, just like this, um, directly from the component. But to make this work, we actually have to export default. So we're going to remove this and I left this one like this just so you guys just to show this example to you guys, uh, because it won't work if you don't. So you have to say create post, just like this. And now it will work. So we'll do the same thing with the create post, we'll just copy this, paste it over here, grab this route, paste it over here, and delete this and just change this to create post. Now, um, what happens is our project is running as normal, like just like how it was before. But what it's doing now, it's basically instead of downloading all the JavaScript and, and the whole thing as a bundle initially, it will actually load stuff depending on uh, when we click on the link that directs us towards that component. But there's a caveat, you'll see that when I click on it right now, it will actually error to us. If I refresh the page, it will now work. But navigating through them is actually not working. Because what it requires is that we actually suspend the routes that are lazily loaded. So suspense is something I've, I've talked about in a couple of videos. Um, it is a component provided um, and mainly used after react 18. And it allows us to provide something like this, right, we'll, we'll wrap the components we want to lazily load with the suspense. And uh, um, over here, what we'll do is we'll put a fallback to this component. Initially, I'll just put a very simple fallback. And a fallback is just a like a piece of UI that will load while this components are not loading. Because remember, now, since we're lazily loading these components, they won't load immediately when you navigate throughout the routes, it would actually wait a little bit to download the JavaScript bundle, and then display it. So we need to put a fallback for this into that little period of time where it is loading the component. So the fallback for now would just be an h1 tag saying loading just like this. And we'll see that now it should work. I'll refresh the page. Um, let me see why it's not working. Oh, yeah, I, for, I forgot. Uh, basically, <laughs> uh, when you put the suspense inside of routes, you actually need to put it outside of the routes. The reason for that is because every component inside of the routes from React Router DOM has to be a route component. So putting the suspense there wouldn't work. So all you have to do is put it outside and wrap everything around with the suspense component. And you'll see now that if I go to the home page, right, I'm inside of the home page over here, when I navigate to the create post for like a small second, it will actually display our fallback component, the loading thing, right. And if I try to go back now, it doesn't, because it's already loaded, it will only display the fallback and only load once when you click on that, right, I'm in the create post, I'll go to the home. And it took a little bit, but then it loaded, right, I'm in the home now, I'll click on create post, it says loading. But now if I go back to home and go to create post, it's not loading anymore, just like it would in a normal component. So this is basically the whole concept behind this. So overall, the point of this is that you understand that in large projects, there are different ways to improve performance. And this can be a really good method. Um, a lot of big projects use this or something similar to this, because they need to, right, you're, you're not gonna wait for I don't know, a 1000 JavaScript files to load, if you're a user, just to access one specific part of the website, you need to lazily load parts because it is it provides a better user experience. And um, there are a couple of stuff that I would like to mention, for example, uh, the fact that you can do this in different ways, you can do this using configuring webpack, for example, but the reason why I like to use um, the lazy function and um, the suspense component from react is that although it only works with client side rendering, which is what we're doing over here, it actually allows us to um, like choose which components we want to lazily load, because we don't need to actually lazily load everything, right? We just do this for which ones we want. Um, because uh, that's how it was designed. And honestly, I like this a lot, because it is very easy to use and learn as well. So this is basically it for the video. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like down below and comment what you want to see next. Subscribe because I'm posting two to three times a week, and I would massively appreciate it. Again, thank you so much for watching the video. And yeah, that's basically it. Really hope you guys enjoyed it. And I see you guys next time.